Hello, welcome to this lesson of the AC Circuit Analysis Tutor. What we're going to do here is finally talk about the capacitor and the impedance of a capacitor in the phasor domain. In the last section we talked about resistors, and we talked about inductors, and we basically boiled it down and said that uh, the uh, impedance is, is an analog to the concept of resistance when we're talking about AC circuits. So ultimately when you solve your circuits, all of your components, your resistors, your capacitors, your inductors, you're going to transform them to the phasor domain. The resistors will stay the same. The inductors you'll convert to the impedance we talked about in the last section. The capacitors we're going to talk about its impedance here. Once you know how to convert all the circuit components, we've already talked about how to convert the sources to phasors, then you can actually do some analysis. So we're kind of walking through here. So I'm going to show you what the impedance is for a capacitor, and then at the end I'll kind of want to wrap up impedance in general, and in the next section we'll work on some impedance problems to give you a little bit of practice. It is a little bit of a weird concept at first, um, but you'll find how useful it is in a second. So for capacitors, right, capacitors, right, for capacitors, um, the important relationship really is that I is equal to C dV dt. So for inductors we had a similar relationship between the current and the voltage involving a derivative. For capacitors we have a, a very analogous relationship where the current is equal to the derivative of the voltage multiplied by a constant here. So again, we expect the current and the voltage to be shifted with respect to one another, kind of like it was for inductors, um, because we have this derivative here. And so let's draw a graph and sort of learn from that, and we'll tie that all together. So if this is time, let's draw, since we have the derivative on the voltage, let's draw the voltage first in red. Let's just say that the voltage starts the origin and goes up like this. It's all arbitrary, remember, because all I care about is showing you the relationship between the two. So whether I start the voltage at here, or I start the voltage here, start the voltage down here, it doesn't matter. All I want you to do is see how the current and the voltage look with respect to one another. So this is the voltage. Let's just say we're driving a capacitor with a voltage that looks like this. How does the capacitor respond, for lack of a better word? What is the, volt, what is the current through the capacitor going to look like? Well, at every point in time, it's the derivative of the voltage. So we expect, because the curve is changing greatest up here, we expect to start here. And I'll draw myself some tick marks in other locations to help me, uh, to help me draw the thing as well. So we expect the current to start up here and drop through the axis here and go away negative like this and then go through here, reach a peak here, go back down through here, reach peak there, go up there, let me go a little bit higher like this, and then come back down, and so on. So it's not perfect, but you can see what's going on here. So at every point when the original voltage curve is changing most rapidly here, we get a peak here, here, uh, we're changing rapidly here, so we get a peak, we're changing rapidly here, we get a peak, we're changing rapidly here, we get a peak, and so on. The reason I'm drawing the blue curve bigger is to help you visualize the difference, but the value of this capacitor could be such that um, on, on the scale it might stretch it like this, because we're basically taking the derivative multiplying by something to get the current. All right. Now also notice that everywhere where the voltage was a maximum here, we get a current of zero, because when the uh, voltage is not changing very much, the current is zero. So here we have a zero, here we have a zero, here we have a zero, and so on. So it's very, very similar. Let me draw um, this guy. It's very, very similar to the situation we had with an inductor with one important difference. Notice that in this case, 